<sighs> Ruby Volume 5, Episode 12, everybody. It's not as bad as the last one. It's not even close. But by the gods, it's bad. It's very bad. But it does have its good points. They're just too few and far between. The episode once again starts with no consistency. Where are Emerald and Ruby? Where did Oscar come from? And I still have no clue where Vinal is. Oscar makes the most telegraphed attack I've ever seen, and that somehow instant knocks down Lionheart, who, rather humorously I might add, hits Hazel to barely a reaction. Now how did Nora come from that side? And how about Oscar? For him to come on this angle means he ran around, then passed Ruby, then doubled back to go to her. Otherwise, there'd be that weird statue thing behind him. In fact, Ruby seems further away now than she used to be. Then Hazel learns from Lionheart that Ozpin is an Oscar. That's Ozpin! That's Ozpin! Oh, guess I should have noticed the cane that very obviously gives it away. Might I just add... Rawr. Now the animation for Hazel then. On one hand it looks fine, on the other hand it looks derpy as fuck. So Hazel has this intentionally funny moment of ripping apart his clothes. Even Crow's like, I... Uh, so why are you strip? Oh, okay. You're just a very uncivilized person with no idea how to take off a shirt then. Hazel stabbing himself with dust is admittedly a pretty cool moment, and this angry face is pretty full on. <laughs> I especially like Ozpin and Oscar's oh shit moment together. Crow saves Oscar, uses his scythe, this isn't going to last. Oh! And then Vinal shows up from there. And Raven is there too, when I thought she and Crow were much further back away in the last episode? What? what? So Lion Art unlocks the door, Yang reacts, Yang gets rather funnily boffed across the head, and then... This. This scene just agitates me. More on that later. Also, why Sierra is now on her back? But she landed straight on her face, and I know the smart people would say John moved her. That is true, but she landed on her side at the start of this episode. When she landed forward in the last one. Also, Mercury is close enough to kick Yang here, but is now further back and on the wrong side. Ren, talk to me. This is bad. Fucking stellar writing there! Are you just trying to give Ren a part in this battle of fuckwits too? Also, I can't help but imagine this. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! light, light, light. But that's hardly the episode's fault, that's just my mind. So Cinder wants Ruby alive, fair enough, but for some inexplicable reason she didn't like kick Ruby when she was down, or remove her hand from her, or thwack her hard when she went to stab Weiss. All this is whack her. Raven's little head shake is nice though. So Oscar is now suddenly a hard ass who won't allow Ozpin to fight his battles, orders to show Hazel isn't that bad a guy, he's really just pissed at Ozpin, and that Ozpin can explain why. The explanation on why Hazel hates Ozpin literally goes as far as, Why does he hate you? Oh, his sister showed up and died. And... Well, that's about it. No flashback, no detailed story, just... Look, this show isn't smart enough for that. Even though Hazel is literally the only villain in existence who would allow an exposition scene like this mid-fight as he's doing right now. Oh, okay. Hey, Hazel, you're wrong! She knew the dangers! Yes, and a kid knows the dangers of driving a car. But you don't see people thinking it's wrong to blame the parent for allowing the kid to go in the driver's seat. I don't care! I'm never allowing someone to take over my body to fight people! And I'll kick you- Nah. Duh. Why didn't I start with that? Also, Crow is a total afterthought in this episode. He does basically nothing, and Vic was clearly busy today. Hazel goes from blocking with his left arm and facing the back wall to blocking with his right and facing Oscar. Huh? Also, Crow lacks any speed to his attacks, which is hilarious. Also, Crow does worse against Hazel than Ozpin does, and this is despite Oscar's body lacking the speed and power like Ozpin or Crow have. I don't know what we can do. Take her out into a hospital, for God's sake! I mean, seriously, that would be better than just leaving her here with an injury. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. Oh, please. God, no. Please. And John heals. John summons his healing. What a fucking surprise. You know, I was hoping he'd never get his semblance. Because it'd be cooler if he was just a badass normal. But no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, he heals. I'm not surprised. I'm not hyped. And I'm not excited for that, though. I just don't care. No, it wasn't supposed to be like this. Cliche, bad, stupid writing. Cinder Raven of an Astro up the bottom, and that's enough of that then. Lionheart fights Crow, and sadly does better against Crow than he did against Oscar, making me almost feel like Oscar is a Gary Sue only written into the show so Ozpin can give exposition. Speaking of which, this is the best part of the episode. Hazel and Ozpin's fight is pretty good compared to what I'm used to from Volume 5. There's not as much teleporting around and actual attention to the detail of each movement and even the background events. 
That is, if you can ignore that Ruby should be trampled based on where she was last episode, but this episode is giving her a permanent placement miles away. The idea of Hazel actually getting injured by Oscar's weak body isn't that believable, though. It makes me feel like this is Gira vs. the Foxes again. Then again, muscles don't matter in Ruby, so Gira and Hazel are both pretty screwed. What's going on? I think she's going to be okay. She seems to be stabilizing. More cliche lines, everybody. I thought maybe he'd say, I don't know, I mean, John seems to be healing her. But nobody other than John seems surprised that he can heal. Oh yeah, shit, Mercury vs. Yang. I forgot about that. But mostly because this pisses me off. I mean, it really does. This was the chance for Yang to get a real one-on-one -on -one fight where she had to fight off multiple illusions while trying to take down the real Mercury and Emerald. But instead, it's nothing and she's beaten easily. You want to know why Neo and Yang was such a good fight? It's not just because Yang got beaten easily and thus it made Neo seem like a threat, it's because you can see how it happened. Yang did her best and her temper eventually got the better of her. She got taken down in a battle of stamina versus agility. Yang tired herself out just trying to hit Neo, who really did need to try. This is the bad version of that. Instead of making Yang do a Wonder Woman and tire herself out by fighting off a shitload of illusions, she just... Nope. She sees an illusion of her mum and somehow this distracts her enough, even though she knows her mum isn't there, and Yang didn't see Mercury right in her peripheral vision until he was right in front of her! And I don't buy that these few attacks took her down. I mean, their last fight made it clear that a real confrontation would be a battle of if Mercury can get enough smaller, faster combos down before Yang manages to hit him hard enough. Although it is true that Mercury could potentially hit really fucking hard with his feet, He's at least as strong as Yang, seeing as he matched a full wound up Yang punch, given enough time to really put power into it. I guess this really makes... No, it doesn't make sense. Hazel and Oscar are still okay. Then, through a series of confusing shots, Lionheart shoots Oscar in the back, and Hazel hits Crow. But given he previously hit Oscar really fucking hard, and Oscar was fine, you'd think Crow would be okay. Yeah, no, he literally disappears, and Ruby doesn't give a fuck that her uncle, whom she idolizes, just got swatted away like a bug. In fact, Crow literally pulls a Vinar by vanishing from the episode and not, say, hitting the wall or roof or the upper walkway with a thud? Would it have taken that long to just animate Crow hitting a back wall groaning and laying down in pain? Or to animate Ruby with maybe some shock? Ruby tells John not to stop what he's doing, but he doesn't put his hands back on her wound, so he may not be doing anything. But of course he is, because PLOT! Ruby tells Nora and Ren to cover John and Weiss, even though nobody is attacking John or Weiss. And the only characters on the bad side are distracted with different fights right now. So Ruby comes in to help Yang, and people are going to see Ruby strike that pose and prepare for a tag team battle, and immediately ignore that Yang isn't allowed to have a good fight scene. To be fair though, nobody in this volume is allowed to have a good fight scene other than Weiss. So Cinder then betrays Raven and Vinal. I was frozen today! Stabs Vinal, and Raven is revealed as a maiden. Credit where credit's due, the reveal is actually pretty cool. But wait, the only way for this to have happened would be if Raven killed the Spring Maiden who ran away seven years ago meaning that Raven got the power by ending her. However, this makes no sense as Raven should have known what would happen and you'd think she'd know better? If she wanted to avoid confrontation, then they should have left the Maiden alone. And if, say, she didn't kill the Maiden and she made friends with the Maiden, well, guess what? That's also stupid. She's also being stupid for that. Maybe they should have just had a male kill her so the power goes somewhere random and away from them. I mean, it also makes, it also makes me wonder what the fuck Vernal's laser from episode 11 was. Also, what is Vernal's purpose then? Why is she so close to Raven? And did Cinder not notice Vanal not reacting to the Silver Eyes? Or maybe notice that Raven was affected? Or maybe someone else would have noticed Raven being affected? Or maybe Raven should have actually been affected? What? Why? How? Uh, what happened to the love bug, huh? Why is Cinder now using a stretchy arm? And what was their plan going to be? If Raven intended to cut Cinder down while Vanal stalled her hand touching thing, then she should have just done it when, whether Cinder was talking or not. And how did this Claw even stab Vanal? Is Glory just not a thing for her? Because I'm pretty sure she beat Weiss handily and without really getting hurt. Although, this does actually make me raise a question that isn't a complaint or wondering why something's stupid. Can someone be all four maidens at once? And what would happen when they die? Would all of that power go to one person, or would it separate into multiple powers once again? And who would be chosen for each power? Would it be random, or would it be calculated? Would it be the closest power that the main maiden had would go to the first person they thought of, and the second main power would go to the second person? These are some actual questions I want answers to, and they're really interesting to me. I know none of them are going to get answered. You know, this whole volume, no, no, this whole series, this whole current version of Ruby, it seems more and more like an insult. The writers and the directors and the staff expect us to be so stupid 
we won't notice shitty writing, shitty consistency, shitty continuity, and shitty choreography. Despite some of us being older people, I'm not even that old and I can notice all these fucking flaws. This episode is not the worst, but this volume really is. It treats us all like fucking idiots and we deserve better. I know what suspension of disbelief is, but I'd rather not have to suspend so much that the roof comes collapsing on top of me. Now it's not going to stop me from watching Ruby, and I'm still going to anticipate the day that it can salvage things, but this really is the dark point of the series. I pray for the next volume to be good, I really do! <sighs> Goodbye Ruby. See you next volume. Wait, there are gonna be two more episodes?